The second group of hydrocarbons that we need to look at is the first of our unsaturated hydrocarbons. These are the hydrocarbons that have a double bond. You can see in the example that I have on the slide that we have a double bond in this position here. The double bond is between the two carbons. What it's actually done is it's reduced the number of hydrogens by two, one from each of the carbons. And so now if we were to draw this representative molecule, you can see it would look something like this. A double bond between the carbons and two hydrogens off each of the two carbons. The fact that there is one, two carbons means our prefix for two carbons is eth. But what's the suffix? Well, this particular group are called alkenes, and alkenes are the ones that are characterized by this double bond. So where we have a double bond, uh, which in this case we do, the ending now changes from being an ane to an ene. So the suffix is ene. -E, and therefore, the name of this compound would be ethene. Now, if we go back to our example, here we had a um, butane. And so if I just change this molecule slightly and add some of the little bendy uh, bonds so that I can create a double bond, I can put a double bond here in the center of my butane. So you can see in order for me to create um, a, a version of this four carbon compound that has a double bond and therefore is now an ene and no longer an ane, I have to remove two hydrogens. So how do we name this particular compound? Well, it now has four carbons, so four carbons would be but. And the fact that it has a double bond means that it would be an ene. So this would be called butene. However, remember we were talking about the fact that sometimes the location or the position of a functional group, like a double bond, may be ambiguous. There may be more than one solution. And in fact, in this case, there is. If I tell you to construct a model or to draw butene, I haven't given you enough information because there's more than one version of butene. So what I need to do in order to check that is to do my counting again for my carbons. So here I have one, two, three, four. Either way, one, two, three, four. So when I look at this, my double bond is between the second and the third carbon. My rule is smallest number. So the smallest number in this case would be two. So butene is not exactly correct. A better answer would be but two ene. And that's where the double bond is sitting in the middle. Now we can show that there's another version of this simply by um, swapping one of these groups to the other end. If I move this group to the other end, then what you can see I have now, and I haven't changed anything of the same number of atoms I had to begin with, but now you can see that the double bond is at an end. It's between the first and the second. Now we're not going to call it the third and the fourth because we're using the smallest numbers, that's our rule. But this time, the smallest number between one and two is one. So there is another version which is but one in. This is what we talk about when we talk about ambiguity. If I ask you to draw butene, you can see that now there are two options, but one in and but two in. So therefore, I can't ask you to draw something that general. I must be more specific and tell you which of these molecules I want you to draw. The addition of the double bond does create some um, extra things for us to deal with. And the other interesting thing that we'll look at later on is the double bond is basically telling us there are four electrons now in this region. So one of these covalent bonds is two electrons. But when we've got a double, we've got four electrons. Now that's pretty unstable. So this particular group 
are quite chemically reactive, certainly more so than the corresponding alkane. But we have one more group to look at. 